Dan Bauman with ChiefExperts.com here to talk about some of the other mistakes that some chief users make. Again, not necessarily mistakes, just maybe oversights. One of those is default settings. In every plan that you work on in Chief Architect, you can set and determine initial characteristics of everything that you use in your project. Now what I see happen so often in all of the clients that I deal with and many of the clients that I deal with is that they'll just open the plan and start drawing without any forethought into what they want to use in the project. And I want to talk about a few of the things that are really, really key for you to keep an eye on in these default settings. Okay, the first one that you want to be aware of, and I'm going to talk about a couple of things here. The default settings in Chief X1 are set with the, under this icon here. You can also go up to the pull down menus and set some of your default settings from right here. You can also do it by double clicking on many of the icons to get to the default settings menus for those items. Let's talk about the first default setting that just about everybody overlooks when they start a plan. It's two of them actually. And what I'm going to do is just double click on the framing icon. The thing that's most overlooked with when people start a plan is they don't set up the floor and ceiling thicknesses for their plan. Now you want to keep an eye on um, some of these defaults in the framing. Okay, in the framing defaults you can Initially, you'll have a couple. You'll have two floors. As you add more floors, you'll get more tabs. The first thing you want to be aware of is these items right here: joist depth. The joist depth setting determines what thickness the floor is going to be for that particular floor system above those walls. So you always want to set that first. So if you're going to use a two by ten floor system come in and change this to nine and a quarter. If you're going to use a 16 inch floor truss for the majority of the plan, you set it up for the majority of the plan, you can always change it on a room by room basis later. But you have to start out by setting it up as a default for the entire floor. So whatever the most of the floor is, that's what the default is going to be. So that's the main thing that I see people miss when they're starting a plan is the floor joist thickness and the ceiling joist thickness too for that matter. All right, so you want to get those right. And then the other thing that you want to set up here are the roof framing thicknesses. If you're using roof trusses, make sure that the rafter thickness is the same as the truss top cord and bottom cord. Very important. So you want to remember that. So that's one of the key things that I see people miss. It's a lot easier to set this up right now than it is to come back after your plan is mostly drawn and then set it then. Okay, another item that gets missed quite a bit is setting a default floor and ceiling height. Now the program comes set up with a default floor height so here we do have to click on the wrench to get to this. Go to the floor defaults and open this menu. Alright so if your entire plan is going to be eight foot ceilings leave this alone. You don't have to change it. If you're going to be doing different size, you know, eight foot or nine foot ceilings in most of your plan for this floor plan. Change this. If you're going to do eight foot ceilings, change that to the 109 and the eighth. All right. So now as you're adding more rooms to your plan, they'll all be nine foot ceilings by default. If you need to change ceiling heights on a room by room basis, you can do that later. Okay. A couple more default settings that I want you to be aware of. Okay. Cabinets. Again, you go into the cabinet settings under general cabinet there's a setting here and this is normally set at three and three or three and nine I usually change that to one and one it gives me more control over placing cabinets in my plan and then any of these items here if you click on them any of the items you change in the default settings notice, notice what it says up here at the top of the screen it says default okay change the default here before you start drawing your plan and that's what you'll be putting in your plan from that point forward so you can do that with cabinets, you can do that with your CAD items, your cameras, your dimensioning, doors, windows, electrical, and your floor and ceiling heights, your foundation heights, all of the different items that you typically like to draw with, you can change those default settings before you even get started. All right. One other thing that's, you know, text defaults. You want to have a different type of text in your plan change the text default. 
Now again, remember this is plan specific. So if you want to use a different type of a font, maybe you want to use the blueprint font. So we type BLU here. We're going to use the blueprint DBT. And again, I'm not going to type anything here because I'm in the default dialog. Again, I could have got the same place by double clicking on the text icon. All right, make that change here. Now from this point forward, I will be using that font in my plan. All right, so that's what defaults are all about. Set them up. From that point forward, that's what you'll be using in your plan with those default settings. Now there's lots of other default settings that you can use in your plan. So you'll want to kind of just experiment, go through the different menus, click on the little wrench icon, just go through everything on the list. In fact, that's not a bad idea to start doing this before you even start doing your plan, especially if you're doing an existing house. One of the first things you might want to consider doing if you're drawing an as-built of something is to run through the default settings, set everything up to the way that building is, and then start drawing. You can change your default settings after you've started drawing. Uh, certain things act differently when you do that. Uh, so you have to kind of experiment with the default settings. I, I generally tend to leave my default settings alone once I've set them in the beginning and then I will group select and change things later on if I need to make changes to them. So again, that's something that's very important. Your default settings are plan specific. If you want to use your settings that you've done in a different plan, in a future plan, you can open that plan and, and just delete everything and, and use that. Or you could just create a plan, delete everything, get everything set up just right, and then set, your, set that as your template so that all your future plans will be used with that, with all of those default settings in there. And I hope, you've, I hope that made some sense to you as about the default settings. It will save you a lot of time. Again, the framing thing is the main thing that's overlooked by many people. And, uh, you know, try, try setting those defaults. They do pay off. Again, I invite you to join us at chiefexperts.com to view all of our training seminars and all of our tutorials. All of our content is uh, available to all the Chief Experts members. This is Dan Baumann with chiefexperts.com signing off.